Another film that I watched recently was The Quatermass Conclusion. Um, it comes from a rather complicated background. It's the fourth in a series of uh, stories about Sir, uh, Professor Bernard Quatermass, head of British Rocket Group, who had a series of encounters with alien creatures. Um, the original three television serials were made in the 1950s, and all three were adapted into films by Hammer. In 1979, after a gap of 20 years, a new series was made, this time by ITV, and rather than later remaking it as a feature film, it was decided to simultaneously re-edit the four 50-minute episodes into one 108-minute feature film, which was intended to be released internationally while the TV series was broadcast in the UK. And that film is The Quatermass Conclusion. It stars John Mills, no less, as Bernard Quatermass, who's navigating the pre-apocalyptic, uh, socially collapsing UK of the very near future, looking for his missing granddaughter, who seems to have fallen in with a cult called the Planet People, who believe that they're going to be transported away to another world, and that the young people of the world are rebelling against the old, but it turns out there's some kind of alien force behind everything that's been influencing young people to turn against their elders and betters. It's a film of two parts. The production side is immaculate. The acting is terrific. You've got an Oscar winner in the main role, and Mills is excellent, even though he's not quite as assertive as I feel Quatermass ought to be. Uh, the production looks fantastic. It's directed by Piers Haggard, and it's, it's a big production. It's a very expensive TV series, and it looks amazing. The photography is fantastic. Um, the effects work is very clever. The makeup looks great. It's a serious piece of science fiction, and it's being given all the support it needs to really work. The problem is that the story is massively reactionary, and it's like the Daily Mail decided to make a science fiction movie. It's all about how old people uh, are being sidelined because young people are much more important, um, more so that um, the old need to come to the rescue of the young because they're so misguided about all these things, about you know, concerns about the planet and everything, whereas the old people know best. The old people will, will show them the way and point out the errors of the young. And it really is about, you know, so at some point Nigel Neal was you know, sworn at by a teddy boy and he's never let it go. I find it very strange that something as right-wing and reactionary and small-minded as the Quatermass conclusion could have come from the same household as Mog the Forgetful Cat which is written by his wife, Judith Carr. Um, it's a great piece of um, science fiction production for television. Uh, and the way it's been restructured to work as a film is interesting. Although the TV series is too long and the film is too short. Even Neil himself said that it really needed to be a bit over two hours to really work, rather than three and a half hours of the uh, TV series and the hour 45 of the movie. Um, so it's... It's not something that's terribly satisfactory as a story because it's so out of step, but it is impressive to look at and I have been humming the music from it almost continuously for the last week. So it has its merits, but it has its demerits and they are substantial.